bother with the trombone, Jeeves. So? After half an hour or so, one's lips get incredibly numb. Perhaps it would be wiser not to persist with the instrument, sir. Oh, nonsense, Jeeves. <laughs> I'm only concerned with your health, sir. The numbness of which you speak may be a symptom of some deeper malady brought on by overexertion of the labial and maxillary muscles. My uncle Ernest was... Oh, never mind your uncle Ernest, Jeeves. Generations of Worcesters have soldiered on with much worse than numb lips. I'm sure that is so, sir. Mr. Mangelhofer, sir. Good morning, Mr. Wooster. Ah, good morning, Mr. Mangelhofer. Uh, not behind with the rent, are we? No, Mr. Wooster. But I'm sorry to say that I've had several complaints from other tenants. Complaints? What about? That, Mr. Wooster. This? Colonel Bastard in 5B keeps asking me if this is what he fought for. And Sir Everard and Lady Blennerhassett say they are driven to distraction by the infernal din. Did you say infernal din? I did. Well, let me tell you, Mr. Magelhofer, that the man that hath no music in himself is fit for... Hang on a minute. Jeeves, what was it Shakespeare said the man that hadn't music in himself was fit for? Uh, treason, stratagems and spoils, sir. Treason, stratagems and spoils. What? That's what he's fit for, the man that hath no music in himself. Mr. Wooster, I will speak plainly. Either you cease playing that instrument, or you must leave. Jeeves, unpleasantness has reared its ugly head in the West One Postal District. Indeed, sir. Also a notable lack of give and take and a complete absence of the neighbourly spirit. Complaints, Jeeves, have been lodged about my trombone. Good heavens, sir. The ultimatum is either I chuck playing it or leave. <laughs> Very well, then. We shall be well rid of these bustards and Blennerhassets. I shall leave them without a pang. You are proposing to move, sir? It is my intention to retire to the depths of the country for the summer. There, in some old world sequestered nook, I shall find a cottage and resume my studies. <laughs> In that case, sir, I fear I must give my notice. Jeeves, did I hear you correctly? Yes, sir. You would actually consider leaving my entourage? Only with the greatest reluctance, sir. But if it is your intention to continue with that instrument within the narrow confines of a country cottage... Jeeves, you say that instrument in an unpleasant, soupy voice. Do I take it that you dislike the trombone? It has well been said, sir, that the trombone is not an instrument for a gentleman. I rue the day when you first saw Ben Bloom and his 16 Baltimore buddies at the Alhambra Theatre. I see. And you are resolved to leave if I continue to play it? Yes, sir. Well, then. Leave, dash it. Very good, sir. I know you own most of Devon, Chubby. Well, not for long, I hope. Chuffnell Hall is up for sale. Good Lord. The old homestead, but why? I'm broke, Bertie. Completely and utterly bought and sold and done for. Came up third class this morning. Good Lord. But you still own the village. <laughs> yes. Cost me a fortune. Well, the reason I ask, Chuffy, is that I want to take a cottage in the country somewhere. Can you let me have one? I can give you a choice of half a dozen. Oh, that's wonderful, Chuffy. Well, we'll be able to see something of each other for a change. Too low for lunch most days. Yeah, thanks. What has Jeeves got to say about all this? Shouldn't have thought he wanted to leave London. Jeeves has nothing to say on this or any other subject. We have parted brass rags. What? From now on, Jeeves will take the high road and I will take the other one. He had the immortal wine to tell me that if I didn't give up my trombone, he would resign. Well, I accepted his portfolio. Well, well, well. You can push a Worcester just so far, Chuffy. Very good, Jeeves, I said to him. I shall watch your future career with considerable interest. And that was that. Well, well, well. Good Lord, look at the time. <laughs> Got to see my bank manager at four o'clock. Um, any objection to my uh, looking in on Jeeves on the way? Oh, just to say goodbye. No, and whatever. Just follow the green line. <laughs> It's a bad time of year for valets, Mr. Worcester. 
Really? Ah, Duxbury. Oh, no. Uh, must be musical, you said. Mm. Uh, Duxbury left Lord Belstead's employ when his lordship got a kazoo from a Christmas cracker. The tootling was unbearable, he said. Perhaps something has come in this morning. Uh, Mr. Worcester requires a new valet, Miss Daly. Uh, has anything recently come in? No, Mr. Henbury, I'm sorry. <sighs> there is Mr. Brinkley, of course. Brinkley, of course. Mr. Worcester, you're in luck. I'm Brinkley, the new valet. Mr. Worcester likes to be wakened at ten with tea. Mm, I'm sure he does. Darjeeling in the morning. Earl Grey should he be at home in the afternoon. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Evening wear formal, evening wear informal. Tweed jackets. But enough clothes, hasn't he? Very nearly. And Mr. Worcester is most particular that they be kept pressed, clean, and mended at all times. I'm not a machine, you know. I hope he realises that. I was just about to depart, Mr. Worcester. Oh. Ah, right. Your new man is here, sir. I have been explaining his duties to him. Excellent. Good. Um, all right, is it, Jeeves? I think you may be surprised, sir. Uh, Mr. Brinkley. Well, this is a sad day, Jeeves. Indeed it is, sir. We shall meet at Philippi, I dare say. No doubt, sir. Ah, here is your new man, sir. What, oh, Brinkley? So, do you think we're going to get along together? I don't know yet. Uh, I will say goodbye now, sir. Right, well, uh, goodbye, Jeeves. So, Jeeves has shown you everything, has he? I told him. I'm not a machine, you know. Machine? Uh, well, no, I, I didn't imagine. Well, anyway, uh, we shall be going down to Devon for a couple of weeks this afternoon, Brinkley. I hope that meets with your approval. Don't have any say, do I? Yes, yes, I see what you mean. Well, let's get packed and hire us thither, shall we? Pungleton. My uncle says you're to come to lunch. And who's your uncle? Uncle Chuffy. Oh, Chuffy. Well, well. Uh, shall we be lunching alone? No. There's Mother and me and some American people. Oh, well, perhaps I'd better go and put on a suit. No. What, you, you think I look all right? No. I think you look rotten, but there isn't time. <laughs> Five shillings? What do you mean, five shillings? I mean, five shillings. 
Yes, but what I want to know is how we've got onto the subject. I mean, we were having a nice quiet drive and you suddenly go and introduce this five shillings motif. I want five shillings for protection. What? You don't get five shillings out of me. Chuffy. I think your nephew may have gone off his rocker, Chuffy. He's been trying to touch me for five bob and babbling on about protection. <laughs> He's been watching gangster films. Goes around collecting protection money from everyone. Uh, I don't know what the use of today is coming to, Chuffy. Ah, well, here's his mother, my sister, Myrtle Pongleton. Myrtle, this is Bertie Worcester. Seabury's been trying to con five bob out of him. Oh, he means well, Mr. Worcester. He only takes from each according to his means. <laughs> <laughs> Chuffey's found an American he thinks he can sell the hall to. He's also terribly in love with the American's beautiful daughter. <laughs> oh, never mind about that. All I've got to do is get his signature on the dotted line. And that's what this lunch is for. Soften him up. He wants to turn it into a hotel. <laughs> Take millions, won't it? Well, that's what Elf Taker's got. Stoker? Hello, hello, hello. What a dump! That's enough of that, Dwight. Hello, Mr. Stoker. <laughs> Dwight. <laughs> Mr. Stoker. <laughs> you, um... Uh, you know my sister, Mrs. Pongleton, uh, and this is my friend Bertie Worcester. Worcester! Well, well, well. Old Colonel Worcester in person. Uh, well, you know. Well, sir, this has certainly made my day, you little blob of sunshine. Oh. <laughs> Isn't he looking lovely, Father? Come away from that man, Pauline. That man is bad news. Uh, let's all go into the house, shall we? Come along, Dwight. I want you to meet Seabury. You're going to be such pals. This way, Mr. Stoker. Seabury! I didn't know you knew these people, Bertie. Uh, yes, I met them in New York, just casually. See, I thought Pauline's manner was, was rather warm. Really? Hmm. Well, that's the American way, you know. Well, I mean, she behaved as if you were great friends. No, 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 no. She goes on like that with everyone. Big-hearted, you see. Well, well, she does have a delightful, generous, spontaneous, impulsive sort of nature, doesn't she? <laughs> Absolutely, yes. <laughs> and, um, beautiful, too. <laughs> Is she? Is she really? Well, I, I hadn't noticed, Chuffy. Uh, do you know, I, I think it might be... Uh, it might be best if I didn't join the throng at the luncheon table. Got a bit of a headache. Oh, are you sure? Mm. Well, um, I'd better go in. Right. What? Ah, uh, oh, yes, yes. <laughs> More surprised than pleased, eh? No, no, not at all, no. I, well, it's obviously tickled pink to see you, old thing, but I can't deny that when it comes to seeing your father... Oh, he's convinced I'm still pining for you, you know. You don't mean that. Mm. He thinks he's part of the young lovers and has got to exercise ceaseless vigilance to keep them from getting together again. <laughs> Little knowing you never had a happier moment in your life than when you got my letter. No, dash it, really. No, I, I always esteem you most highly. <laughs> There's just about 200 acres, if you don't include the village. Mm. Now for a golf course, tennis courts, swimming pool. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> mm. I've got three like this at home. Give me five shillings. Why should I give you five stupid shillings? Protection. Tell me about Marmaduke. Marmaduke? I don't think I know him. Lord Chatnell, idiot. Marmaduke. <laughs> it's a beautiful name. Hello, 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 hello. What do you mean? Well, no one would say that Marmaduke was a beautiful name, wantonly and without good reason. <sighs> All right. Less of the Sherlock stuff. I'm not trying to hide anything. Uh huh. You love this, um. <laughs> Excuse me, this Marmaduke? I'm dippy about him, Bertie. 
Don't you just worship the way his hair sort of fluffs up at the back? My dear girl, I have better things to do than go about staring at the back of Chuffy's head. The front's bad enough. However, be prepared for tidings of great joy. I'm a, I'm a pretty close observer, and a certain bulbous look in the old boy's eyes when a recent conversation happened to turn in your direction convinces me that he is deeply dippy about you, too. I know that, you chump. Do you think a girl can't tell? He's obviously crazy about me, but not a yip from him. I sometimes feel that he was a king in Babylon when I was a Christian slave. Really? Well, you know best, of course. Very doubtful, I'd have said myself. You're a friend of his. You could give him a hint. Tell him there's no need for cold feet. It is not cold feet. It's a matter of delicacy. We men have our code in these matters. Now, we, we, we feel that it ill beseems us to make a beeline for a girl like a man charging into a railway restaurant for a bowl of soup. <laughs> what nonsense! You asked me to marry you after you'd known me two weeks. Oh, but there you were dealing with one of the wild Worcesters. Yes, it, it, it reminds me of a time when... Excuse me, miss. <sighs> yes, Jeeves, what is it? Jeeves! You've come back! Yes, well, Jeeves, uh, you acted rashly, but I, I shan't hold it against you. The new man Brinkley is not entirely satisfactory. Big pardon, sir. I came to tell you that luncheon will shortly be served and to say that Mr. Stoker was inquiring about Miss Stoker's whereabouts. Oh, Lord. Yes, but... I'm here in the capacity of Lord Chuffnell's personal gentleman, so... You... You mean... I... You're working for Chuffy? Uh, yes, sir. His Lordship engaged me after you had informed him of my availability. Good Lord, Jeeves. Quick off the mark. His Lordship was kind enough to say that a good man is hard to find, so... That's true, God knows. Look, I'd better push along before my father starts getting suspicious. Don't forget, Bertie, will you? A little hint in a certain person's ear? The matter shall receive my promptest attention. <laughs> I don't know where that girl got to. You don't suppose she's with that Wooster, do you? Oh, Bertie? No, no, I shouldn't think so. No, he's gone. Asked me to apologize. Um, she knew him in New York, did she? Knew him? Huh. Pauline only went and got herself engaged to him. <coughs> and if I ever see that degenerate hanging around her again, I will not be responsible for my actions. You'll agree with me that something must be done about the Fifth Baron, I take it? I beg your pardon, sir? Oh, come, come, Jeeves. You know what I mean? What if I do? He's potty about her. I am, of course, aware that his lordship is experiencing a sentiment deeper and warmer than that of ordinary friendship for the young lady, sir. Yes, and she has specifically confessed herself to being dippy about him. But she's upset, the poor fish. She detects the love light in his eyes. She's all for it. What worries her is he doesn't do anything about it. A not uncommon dilemma, sir. Oh, yeah, what's it all about, James? I mean, he loves her, she loves him, so what's the snag? His lordship is a gentleman of scruples, sir. He fears that being of straitened means himself, he has not the right to propose to a young lady as wealthy as Miss Stoker. Oh, I see. So unless old man Stoker buys the hall, poor old Chuffy will continue to be Kid Lazarus, the man without a bean. And yet why, Jeeves? I mean, plenty of bust blokes have married oofy girls before now. His lordship is a gentleman who feels strongly on this particular point, sir. Well, there's only one thing for it, Jeeves. Chuffy must be shoved over the brink. I do not quite follow you, sir. What he needs is a jolt. If he thought that there was a grave danger of some other bloke scooping her up, well, wouldn't that make him forget those dashed silly ideas of his and charge ahead, breathing fire through the nostrils? Jealousy is undoubtedly a powerful motivating energy, sir. Do you know what I'm going to do, Chief? No, sir. I'm going to kiss Miss Stoker and take care that Chuffy sees me do it. Uh, really, sir, I could not... Please, Jeeves, I have the whole thing taped out. After lunch, I shall draw Miss Stoker aside into the seat in the shrubbery. You will then arrange for Chuffy to follow her. Waiting until I see the whites of his eyes, I shall then fold her in a close embrace. If that doesn't work, nothing will. I consider that uh, you would be taking a decided risk, sir. His lordship is in a, an extremely and highly emotional state. You know, Jeeves, I desire no further discussion. At 2.30, Inform Miss Stoker that I would like a word with her at the stone bench in the shrubbery. At 2.31, inform Lord Chuffnell that she would like a word with him. The rest you can leave to me. Very good, sir. <laughs> and the propellers 
was going to take about a week to repair. So it looks like we're going to be stuck down in a little harbor down there. What a damn nuisance for you. <laughs> Tell you what we'll do. Why don't you folks come on out to the Gypsy Queen and I'll show you around. Oh, your yacht. <laughs> that would be very nice. I bet you've never been on a yacht before, even. I have. I've been on trillions of yachts. Hey, Dwight, is that a way to behave? Give me five shillings! No, I'll give you five stupid shillings! Don't run, Seabury, dear. You might hurt yourself. <laughs> You said you wanted to talk to me. Ah, oh, well, quite. Uh, let's let's sit on the bench, old thing. Uh, right. <clears throat> uh, that fellow Jeeves, does he come with a house? I sure would like a fellow like that to look after me. Well, you haven't agreed about the house yet. Oh, sure we have. You got yourself a deal. You're going to buy it? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Pauline? <laughs> I don't know. You sure that Wooster fellow has left? Absolutely. Mm. Pardon me, Your Lordship, but Miss Stoker was asking for you. She's in the shrubbery. Oh, I'll go. It was Lord Chuffnell she particularly asked for. Oh, you? nonsense. Of course you'll want to see her old daddy. <laughs> um, dashed funny thing, love. <laughs> Did you bring me all the way out here to tell me that love's a dashed funny thing? Uh, well, no. Um, what I want to know is why did that child demand ten shillings from me? Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. Right, this is it. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Bertie! Wooster! Ah! What in Hades do you think you're doing? <laughs> Well, I think he's got a touch of the sun, Daddy. He'll have a touch of my boot if he starts all this again. <laughs> uh, look, I can explain. Pauline, go back to the house. Uh, you come too, Daddy. Let me tell you, Wooster, one more stunt like this and you'll find yourself in need of serious repair. No, look, obviously, I, I, I wouldn't dream of that. Enough, I say. No, all I was trying to do... Quiet! Right. All in all, Brinkley, not the most successful of Bertram's stratagems. How do you mean? Well, it, it, uh, it didn't work. Here he is now, anyway. Stoker? No, you're so-called Lord Chuffnell. I'm off. Ah, Chuffy, enter old sport. Hello, Bertie. <laughs> Something amiss, Chuffy? Why didn't you tell me you'd been engaged to Pauline Stoker? What? Oh, no, no, no look here, Chuffy. <laughs> the whole thing didn't last more than 48 hours from, from kick-off to final whistle. And since then, absolutely nothing. Do you swear that? And there's nothing between you now? Nothing whatever. So, charge in, old man. The girl's absolutely potty about you. Who told you that? Well, she did. I mean, she really does love me. Passionately, I gather. Oh, well, well, I'm uh, sorry if I uh, seemed a bit rattled for a moment. You see, uh, when a chap's just about to get engaged to a gal, it's, uh, it's rather a jar to find she was engaged to someone else just a few months before. So you've, you've proposed to her, then? Yeah, not yet, but I'm going to. Uh -huh. And what about the off situation? The what? The off, the dibs, the do re mi, the, the, the happy cabbage, the oil of palm. Yes, yes, I do speak English. It's all right. Stoker's agreed to buy the hall. Really? Oh, well, Chuffy, that is good news.
I'm going to pop the question tomorrow. We've been invited out to the yacht. Wonderful. Well, Chuffy, I hope you'll be very, very happy. I can honestly say that Pauline is one of the nicest girls I've ever been engaged to. I wish you'd stop harping on about that engagement. I'll never lose sight of the fact, Chuffy, that the betrothal only lasted two days, during both of which I was in bed with a nasty cold. Yeah, she must have had a wonderful time being engaged to you. What on earth made her accept you, I wonder? I don't know. I what's consulted a knowledgeable pal, and his theory was that the sight of me hanging around like a loony sheep awoke the maternal instinct in woman. There may be something in this. I'd like to propose a toast. Ladies and gentlemen, to the Chuffnell Hall Hotel. Chuffnell Hall Hotel. This is just my room. There's loads more. Monka gave me a horse for Christmas. We had a dance once. In the main saloon, it's so big. Thousands of people dancing. Give me five shillings. Hades was that? Oh, stop it! Oh, get out! Stop it! Get out! Oh, get out. Oh, get out. Oh, come on! You oh, oh, hey. Give us a kissy. Give you a kissy, all right then. <laughs> Look like a like a French army who've just got to Moscow and discovered its early closing day. Mm, the simile is an apt one, sir. Go straight to your room and stay there, you horrible little child. But he was only. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> Upon witnessing the position of affairs, Mrs. Pongleton uttered a sharp cry and struck Master Dwight with considerable force on the right ear, sir. Upon which, of course, precisely, sir, Mr. Stoker, espousing the cause of his son, aimed a powerful kick at Master Seabury. Oh, jeez, tell me you got him. Yes, sir. Oh, jeez, have a prawn. Thank you, no, sir. A heated altercation then broke out between Mrs. Pongleton and Mr. Stoker. She called on Lord Chuffnell for support, and he proceeded to take Mr. Stoker to task for the assault. And then? <clears throat> High words ensued, sir. The upshot being that Mr. Stoker, with considerable warmth, informed Lord Chuffnell that if he supposed that he, Mr. Stoker, intended to purchase Chuffnell Hall after what had occurred, uh, then he, Lord Chuffnell, was in grave error. <sighs> Upon this... Get it over, Jeeves. I can see what's coming. Yes, sir. Um, I agree with you that the whole affair does have something of the dark inevitability of Greek tragedy. His lordship, I regret to say, um, became somewhat unguarded in his speech. He ticked Stoker off. With considerable vigour, sir, stating in an extremely candid manner his opinion of the latter's character, commercial probity, and even appearance. Well, that must have put the lid on it. It did create a coolness, sir. Before all this happened, had Chuffy said anything to Stoker about wanting to marry Miss Stoker? No, sir. Well, I don't see how he can do it now. I'll have to meet by stealth. Even that will prove a little difficult, I fear, sir. And Mr. Stoker announced that he was not permitting Miss Pauline to go ashore during the remainder of their enforced stay in the harbour. Well, I thought you said he didn't know anything about the engagement. And Mr. Stoker's motive in immuring Miss Stoker on the vessel, sir, is not to prevent her from encountering his lordship. His exact words were, she's not going to go getting kissed by that imbecile friend of hers again. <sighs> Meaning me? Seems likely, sir. And he said all this to Chuffy, you say? Yes, sir. About this imbecile friend kissing Miss Stoker? Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> Lord Chuffnell appeared somewhat put out by the information. What did he say? He mentioned something about scooping out your insides, sir. <sighs> what do you advise, Jeeves? I can only suggest, sir, that should his lordship tax you with the matter, you tried to persuade him that the spirit in which you embraced Miss Stoker was purely a brotherly one. Here, where 
is he? Who? Your master. Master? I'm going to kick him from here to Newton Ferries and back again. Do what you like. I haven't seen him. Huh? Uh, you haven't seen a rather... Ah, there he is. Ah, ah Chuffy, old man. Skulking in here, eh? Skulking? Oh, no, far from it. No, oh, Jeeves told me all. Too bad, too bad. No, I little thought when I bestowed a, a brotherly kiss on Pauline Stoker uh, by way of congratulating her on your engagement. Yeah, we weren't engaged then. Uh, no, no, quite. No, well, I, uh, I'm aware of that, Chuffy. Uh, your putative engagement, I should have said. No, I little thought what trouble would come bobbing along so soon afterwards. What do you mean, brotherly? Oh, well, brotherly. Well, Stoker didn't think it was brotherly. No, well, we all know what sort of mind Stoker's got, don't we? No, had you been there, you'd have seen exactly how brotherly it was and, 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 and given it the truffnel seal of approval, I'm sure. Well, all right. But in future, a little less of this fraternal stuff. Yeah, just so. I don't want to feel when I'm married that at any moment I might come into the room and find a brother and sister act in progress. Uh, you still intend to marry this Pauline, then? Well, of course I intend to marry her. But what about the truffle scruples? I mean, if, if old Stoker doesn't buy the hall, aren't you rather by way of being back in the position you were before? Not able to marry the Uffy girl because you haven't got the Mazuma? No, that's all changed. I was a fool. What does money matter? <laughs> I mean, uh, love's love. Well... You never spoke a truer word, old sport. No, if I were you, I'd, uh, I'd write her a letter embodying those views, just so she knows what the SP is. Bertie, I will. And what's more, Jeeves shall take it to her. <laughs> well, thus removing any chance of old Stoker intercepting it. Well, how will Jeeves get it to her? Stoker wants to employ Jeeves. Jeeves shall go to him. Oh, I see. You mean, operating under the Stoker banner, Jeeves will be free to come and go as he pleases. Exactly. Well, this certainly has put the butter on the spinach. I shall go and tell Jeeves at once. I suppose she really does love me. Oh, dash it, old chap, didn't she say so? But it just seems so dashed odd, her letting you kiss her. Oh, but yes, she, she naturally divined that the, the embrace was purely brotherly. Yes, yes, brotherly. Yes, of course. <laughs> There you are, Jeeves. You ready for the off? <laughs> I've nearly finished the letter. I've stuck more or less to what you suggested. More or less, sir? Well, some of it was a bit too, no, oh, I don't know, soppy. <clears throat> You'll pardon me for saying so, sir, but soppiness is at the very heart of the successful love letter. Without a sufficient degree of soppiness, there is a danger of the communication being laid aside by the recipient to be read at some future date, together with the gas bill, so. Well, the only bit I left out was that bit about her name being twined round my heart like a roses round a cottage door. Oh, pity, is uh, An old favourite, perhaps, but it still has the capacity to move, given the appropriate march of events. Well, I just couldn't bring myself to it, Jeeves. Very good, sir. And, um... I hope you'll be very happy in your new employment. Thank you. Um... <laughs> what time do you want dinner, then? Dinner? Ooh, uh... About 8.30, I should think. Thank you, Brickley. Right. Oh, uh, light the lamp for me, will you? What? That thing? Uh, well, I suppose so. I'm used to the electric, you know. Brickley, there's a, there's a curious smell. Smell? Ah. Show me pie. Ah. Uh, 
Vicky, look. Uh, there's been a slight change of plan. I, I, I just remembered that my uncle's not very well. What uncle? What? Um, Reginald, if you must know. Um, so I think I'll just... Uh... What about your pie? Oh, I haven't got time for that. Uh, you, you help yourself. I'm not eating that. Ahoy there, Gypsy Queen. Who's there? <laughs> it's Jeeves, sir. Permission to come aboard? Oh, come aboard, Jeeves. So, tired of these English aristocrats, eh, Jeeves? I wouldn't put it quite like that, sir. Galley. You got class, Jeeves, you know that? Good of you to say so, sir. Who is it, Daddy? Guess what, honey? Jeeves has come to work for us. Hello, Jeeves. Good evening, miss. Both the breaths are, and the legs. Wonderful letter, Jeeves. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Miss. I didn't know Marmaduke had it in him. But what am I going to do, Jeeves? Daddy won't let me go ashore. If I might make a suggestion, Miss. Heliotrope pajamas. I know. Well, they suit you, I must say. Thank you. What on earth is this? It's my swimsuit. You swam ashore from the yacht? Yes. Why? You know, Bertie, you ought to be in some sort of home. I am my own. The point I would like to thresh out is what on earth are you doing in? <laughs> what on earth did you want to kiss me like that for in front of Father? I thought he was chuffy. You thought my father was Marmaduke? The idea was to let Chuffy observe you in my embrace and thereby get him keyed up to propose to you. <laughs> you know, there's a sort of woolly-headed duckiness about you, Bertie. If I wasn't so crazy about Marmaduke, I could easily marry you. No, 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 no. Don't even dream of it. No, it's all right. I'm going to marry Marmaduke. Ah, well, now we come right back to it. You swim ashore from the yacht. Why? You, you break a window and dump yourself in my little home. Why? Because I wanted somewhere to lie low till I could get clothes, of course. I can't go to the hall in a swimsuit. You came ashore to get to Chuffy. Your man Jeeves said you'd be delighted to help. Oh, he did, did he? Bertie, you sound annoyed. Well, I am annoyed. A reputable boulevardier like myself, whose license has never been so much as endorsed, can scarcely be blamed for looking askance at girls in heliotrope pajamas in his bed. <laughs> You're making a fuss about nothing. All I wanted to... What was that? It's Chuffy. It's Father. Well, 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 hide. Uh, yeah, you best go downstairs. I'll see the light. See the light. I... If it's my father, be careful. What do you mean, be careful? No, it's all right. He probably won't have a gun. Hello, yes? It's Sergeant Holmes, sir. Uh, frankly sorry to keep you so long. I was uh, just thinking of this and that. Uh, sort of reverie, if you know what I mean. Are you aware, sir, there's a window broke? Constable Dobson here spotted it and thought he'd best wake me up to investigate. Oh, the broken window? Yes, yes, I, I know about that. The uh, problem is, sir, the danger of marauders getting through. I thought I did see a marauder getting through, Uncle Ted. What? You young mutton Ned, why didn't you tell me before? I think we'd best search the house, sir. Oh, no, 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 Sergeant. I'm quite out of the question. Uh, well, please yourself, sir. 
But you're shackling the police in their duty. That's what you're doing, shackling us. The marauders are probably lurking, sir. I give you my word, Sergeant, there are no marauders. I'm sorry. Come, Dennis. He's been obdurate. <laughs> The constabulary. Apparently they saw you getting in. Oh, what a lot of trouble I'm giving you, Bertie. No, no, only too pleased. No, well, I'd better be pushing along then. I'm going to sleep in the potting shed. Oh, Bertie, isn't there a sofa downstairs? There is. Noah's. He brought it ashore on Mount Ararat. No, I'll, I'll be better off in the potting shed. Don't worry, old thing. We Worcesters can rough it when it comes to giving two fond hearts a leg up. Miss Pauline's gone. Gone, sir? She's not in her room. She's not anywhere. Good heavens, sir. You don't think that she could have gone ashore to see that Mr. Worcester, sir? Worcester? Of course. I knew it. Perhaps we should go ashore to search for her, sir. Good idea, Jeeves. Come on. He was talking strange, my lord. He said he'd been in a reverie. And Constable Dobson sees him going into the potting shed. No, he was a friend of yours, my lord. We thought we'd best let you know. It's all right, Bertie. It's me. Sergeant Vols is worried about you. Walk me along and have a look. Well, Sergeant Vols is an ass. Begging your pardon, sir. I thought he was acting peculiar. We must admit it is a bit peculiar, Bertie. Sleeping out here, I mean. Uh, yeah, well, there, there was a spider in my bedroom. A spider, eh? Ah. Pink? Uh, well, pinkish. With stripes. It's all right, Sergeant. Nothing to worry about. He's simply as tight as an owl. we better get into bed. No, 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 no. <laughs> uh, it's all right, Bertie. We understand. Look, Sergeant Fools and I will come up with you and kill the nasty old spider. <laughs> 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 Trip and fallen, sir. No, 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 Chuffy! Don't, don't open that door. I know, Bertie, I know. You'll soon be in Betty Buys now. No, no, no. I, no, I, please. No, ah. Uh, no, uh. right. Right, sir, into Betty Buys. Killed the beastly spider. I'm arresting you, my lad, on suspicion of being a marauder. My lad? I know that now. I'm working. This is my home. Oh, 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 come out. Oh, oh, oh. What in Hades is that? It appears 
supposed to be a conflagration, so. Holy Moses, come on, Jeeves. What's going on? It was him, the marauder. He knocked the lamp over. Look! I blame you for this, Jeeves. With respect, sir, I merely intended Mr. Stoker to discover his daughter at your cottage. So strongly does he disapprove of you that I expected him to look more kindly on Miss Stoker's putative engagement to Lord Chuffnoff. The fact that his lordship should also discover her here and in mortal peril was, as the Americans say, pure gravy. Oh, thank you, Jeeves. Uh, what sort of a day is it? Warm, sir. A slight breeze from the southeast and some high cirrocumulus to the west. <clears throat> I've taken the liberty of preparing the car for the journey, sir. Will you drive or shall I? Drive, Jeeves? Journey? To London, sir. Wait a minute. Are you back with me, Jeeves? If that's agreeable to you, sir, yes. Neither Mr. Stoker nor Lord Chuffnell feel themselves quite able to measure up to the required standard. Well, 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 well. London, eh? The drones for lunch, dinner at Quags. Indeed, Sam. <laughs> I imagine that you will not be requiring this, Sam. Oh, Jeeves, what might have been. No, 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 you're quite right. Well, lead on, Jeeves. You can drive. 